Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and here's another episode of what we've automated this week with AutoHotKey. This week, we did a lot of client calls. I mean, a lot, so we didn't create a lot of custom stuff ourselves. Let me go ahead, though, and jump into what we've done. We use Prompt Assistant here to launch our script. And again, last week, I updated this GUI a little bit. If you're interested, you can go check that video out. Um, so these first three we're dealing with... So. One of our clients, we started working on a project. Boy, it's been a while now, six months ago or so. It's a big project. <laughs> yeah, really great, great guy, great client. Um, it's quite an ambitious project, though. Very, comp very, very complicated. And one of the things we were doing was doing some web scraping from different websites. And at the time, Refadium was not available in version two. So Isaias used a bit of using JavaScript through the document title to pass. Um, items back and forth and then other times I think he used UIA slightly and we never liked that because it's just problematic and it's not a great robust approach and so Irfan has been working on Refadium in version 2 and we had um, we asked the client if it was up for getting Irfan to con see if he could convert some of it also critically important to note is it had to not be detected because some of these websites are very, very advanced and they're trying to make sure they understand if someone's using a bot. So Irfan actually was able to connect to some of these, I'm not going to mention them, but mention, mention some of these websites. That, and so it was really cool to have that as a working case. So we'll have to document it at some point, but it was very, very cool. So that's what um, we we're doing with these. Uh, this other one is one of those interesting projects where we got this crazy uh, maybe there's like five spreadsheets total i know there's three at the beginning and i think we got a few more but he's going to keep getting them every month and so it was really um, important to automate it not just a one-time one and done thing so for our other client kelly um he's an accountant uh, he works uh against the uh, not against but um helping people deal with the irs and uh, passion, something I'm very, very passionate about, an idea, something I'm very passionate about. Anyway, um, the files he was getting from his clients were just a mess with merged cells, trying to do stuff. And Isaiah and I, we finally just unmerged all the cells. I can't share anything, of course, because it's confidential data, right? But we unmerged all this, the spreadsheet, and then we used AutoHotKey to go manipulate it, do our searches and stuff, again, all in a program. And then he wanted it broken out in different ways, and so... Um, it's pretty cool. I wish we could share some of it because there's so many things that I think people that work like in accounting um, and, and things like that that they could do with AutoHotKey or VBA for that matter, right? But we use AutoHotKey. The nice thing about that is you don't have to embed it as a macro, which in Excel, and then of course trying to send those files is a pain, right? So this is a very simple way to basically you're connecting to the same COM object with VBA or AutoHotKey to, to control Excel. Um, so anyway, so we, we automated a bunch of stuff for him. He also had another file that he had sent over and he's like, Hey, I have a list of emails and phone numbers with first name. Um, um, and then first name, no, let's see. Um, the phone numbers were on a different tab with the name, first name, and then emails and something else. I forget what was on the other tab. So he said, Hey, if the name is unique, go ahead and use that as a key. Of course, often names aren't unique. Actually, you only had like three or four that weren't unique. But um, Irfan was working. He spent a, a little bit of time um, writing a program to do this. And then I told Irfan after, I'm like, oh, you know, and you know, the client just forwarded it. He didn't specify, of course. But I'm like, this is like a one and done thing, right? We don't need it as a program. He just needs this data, this file put together for him. So um, we didn't charge the client, right, for that time we put in to make the program. And, and then we just did it manually because there were a couple of weird ones. And we, all, we also wanted a list of people who weren't in the one list but not in the other and vice versa. And where we didn't have a phone number for them or whatever. So we just manually used Excel. It was fun watching Irfan. He, um, he knows his way around Excel. He did a really good job with that. But anyway, it's a hard... You need to make sure you talk to your clients when you're doing this kind of stuff. And say, is this a one-time thing? And even when it's a one-time thing, thing, sometimes it is easier to automate it. If you're looking up a lot of data and it's just simple, like um, you can use V or H lookups in Excel, right? And I know there's some new approaches too for doing stuff with that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's easier, but often it, it's something you're going to reuse. And, of course, we have our Excel function library, which makes it really, really easy to um, program in Excel. So it's a very fast, simple way to help do with that. Anyway, so that's what these um, these are. 
Uh, this example, I have no idea what that is. Well, great name, huh, Joe? Example. Uh, input hook. Let me show you. So let me show you in prompt assistant. Let's see. No. Yeah, uh, the code's in prompt assistant. So let's say uh, what I wanted to do is I'm working on like an advanced module in prompt assistant. So let's say the example here is be a notepad just to have something to type in. But let me let me show you the code first. Customize. Of course, goes to the other window. Um, advanced. And so this mail merge. Um, let me actually, because I don't have a simple way to zoom in on that. So let me put it into site. And we'll, we'll at some point make a download on this, but it's going to be in the module. Um, but we're using an input hook. And let's, uh, while I'm doing this, before we forget. Well, actually, that's in prompt system, so I'm not going to worry about it. But um, we were adding some other additional things. But what's cool is right here, this is, this is the bulk let's say language hk that will help a little so notice this text hook we're using a function um, and this prompt input hook so this is the magic right we're going to use an input hook which is going to populate this text hook so hello and then we're using uh the format command to say um the one and then how are you will be on the next line right so and of course i could just type it in here. actually i don't know if i can type it here it should work there but let me go ahead and um, bring it back into here. So if I type MMH period and now a space, this is the hotkey I have set up in Prompt Assistant. I'm gonna say Joe. Now notice that's a tooltip, and I can hit backspace and, and go in. So see how it's adjusting there. When I hit enter, it does the mail merge, and so it has that mail merge example there, right? So um, this is just a simple example of. Sometimes you might have things that you want to type very frequently as a, a reply to email or whatever. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you, hey, name, right? So I want a simple example where I, I put mail merge. Um, I forget what the H was, but um, type. Um, we'll use, oh, that's funny. I can't apparently can't use a hot string in there. Say is. So now what was interesting was that at first I wanted to just use an input hook. Um, the examples that we had done before was you can make it visible but if you make it visible when you backspace what gets sent isn't it's still there first off it doesn't get deleted which of course that would, was dumb and then also when you um if you would backspace it wouldn't send the right characters it was really weird so it was very frustrating so Irfan had this idea of well what if we displayed in a in a tooltip so the tooltip helps you, you still see it. Unfortunately, we can't easily change the size. See how that font is pretty, to me, kind of small. It's not horrible, but I wish I could adjust the size of the font. Well, tooltips, you can't. Although, I asked ChatGPT if you could, and it gave me a registry setting where it seemed at least possible. I showed it to Isaiah and he's like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, it was right before the hero call. And I'm like, I'm not going to go do this and then screw up my computer where I can't join the hero call. So I didn't test it yet. Um, but it would be nice because I was really surprised. You can't adjust the size of fonts for tooltips. Um, it's very annoying. But So this still is a cool thing. It'll be in a, um, I'll try to make, remember to make it a download at some point. Uh, this obviously, this is not auto hotkey code. That's the part in prompt assistant that tells it everything beneath this is a v2 script um, but here it, it's uh it's not overly complicated um you see here's the the backspace you send the backspace and stuff but um the the what i told Irfan was we need a simple way where people can look at this and say hey okay all they do is change this right they put in the the paren um curly braces with the one for the um the first thing which is there's only i think we can only have one on input hooking and anyway maybe we could parse it if there was a space or something and have multiple if we tried but again it's just a quick example because prompt assistant is unlike many other tools where you can actually execute auto hockey code within it which is really cool so uh yeah that was one that i was i was working on well uh, yeah I had the guys work on. I, I always come up with these ideas and then go like, hey, you figure it out. Um, and they and they do. They always do. So, all right, let's get back to our list. Um, untie another great one. Uh, text hook. So this is still, I think, playing with the same thing. Incrementer. This one, I went to share this, I think, last week as a test. 
and let me run it now. It's it's getting close to be ready for a download. So let's say I wanted to have let's say I had a bunch of images of talk ta like Taco Tuesday because I help a restaurant out doing some of these things, right? So I'd say, what? Oh, I gotta get. Oh, that's funny. I hadn't uh, I hadn't finished that input hook, and now I don't know where that is. There we go. Okay, so. Taco Tuesday. And I can also come here to preferences and say what... I forget. If, I think this brings up the GUI. But I want to pad it with three zeros. So I hit save. Now... Oh, control... Was it... I forget what it was. Win shift H. So um, it, this was... Let's start it back at one. Right? So win shift H... Although it's um, Taco Tuesday. So in here, if I go to File, Save As. Whoa. And actually, that's so funny. So notice here, here's the tooltip. It did it. Apparently, Windows Shift H. Um, apparently, I had the auto save on. So that saved this file. Look, it's Taco Tuesday. Um, now, I'm gonna, I turned off the auto save. I'm going to hit Apply because File, Save As. Notice... Oh, to look at that. It somehow didn't increment. It should have incremented that. And this is why we still haven't released it. File, save as. There it goes. That time it incremented it. So if you have a bunch of stuff, like a lot, let's say if I was on you know, a web page and I was, here are all the pictures for Taco Tuesday and I want to save them really quickly, I don't want to have to go write that name over and over or manipulate or whatever. So it makes it really simple. And again, you can turn on that auto save for me. So you right click, hit save as, and it it's done it names it, it it increments it puts it in that folder where you were so that first one and that's where i'm trying to think about maybe the first time it comes up we should say you know let you navigate to a certain folder right because that's another part of us like you want to make sure they're probably in the right spot but yeah that's one we've been working on um oh and it looks like i killed unfortunately i killed uh the recently modified files accidentally i, I that was the one i thought i killed with the hook input hook um, so anyway, where were we here? Um, autosave encoder. Okay, so config GUI, autosave. So that's still the autosave thing. Clip history. We, we have a release. It's on the AutoHotKey, uh, I'm sorry, Automator website. And this can allow you to um, pull up and search across. And Irfan did a little more work on it. He was testing some things. Um, you can have it remember um, what was in your clipboard history, right? And, and it goes back, and you can say for how long. So let's go to the Preference Center. I usually make it like 15 minutes. So it's one hour, I'll say 15 minutes. Apply. And now if I come in here, and let's say copy this, it gets added. Um, that's the title of the window. Here's my text, right? And before we didn't, we had it where you couldn't actually copy from here. So now, if I hit Control C, it'll copy this to my clipboard. Um, these are line breaks. The paragraph marks are line breaks. So now it's doing that. Um, we can also filter it based off of the title um, and the the time. So how long ago it had happened? Now I'm only going back 15 minutes, so these don't make sense, right? Maybe we should have. The other preference settings say, hey, if it says 15 minutes, the, the only thing you can, it, it shouldn't list here more than 15 minutes, right? If it's back an hour, we would have it come back to here. The first three would be listed, but not the rest, right? So maybe we'll add that. I don't know. Um, you can turn on and off whether it's watching the clipboard, which is handy, um, and apply filter to suggestions. So that's where we have this tool. What's really cool with it is um, I'm going to, if I had filtered, I'm not going to filter, but if I had, um, let's say when I start typing, so see these auto suggestions right here? This is from, it's monitoring your clipboard. And so I can I can um, use it. I forget what my hotkey was to bring this up. Um, 31, 32, so let's say I start typing 31, 30, and see the problem is, I don't know, let's, let's do this. The blue dog ran across the street. I'm gonna copy that. Now, I'm going to delete that. Now, when I start typing, the blue, see it in here? So, I think that's badass. I don't know how else to say that. That is going to be really, really helpful. Um, and 
you can have it check other things as well. I'm, we're going to make a video on it, so I'm not going to walk through every aspect of it here. But this is very, it's on the Automator. We're still working through bugs. I think this one has a price of $4.99. I can't remember. Somewhere around there, right? It's not huge, but it is. Because we spent a, a good 80, 60, 80 hours easily, I think, in that tool. Um, probably more. Um, clipboard history. So these are all related to that. The auto suggester. This one is a sister. So that auto suggester, um, that one monitors your clipboard history. But let me exit out of that one. This one, you feed it basically. You feed it files and sources of things. Um, let me go to the Joe version because this is the one I just had for myself. And here I can tell it files. I can create my own, but and I can also choose on the matching. So this is a fuzzy, usually I like the fuzzy matching, uh, but it's the same thing. I can point to files. So let's go to the, I think these are all right here anyway. Here we can, so default word list, I have name at name one. So if I start typing, let's see if this is on. Name. I, I'm not sure I would have thought, let me see. That's, well, this is default word list name one so that should have see this is where we're, we're still having some weird issues case insensitive fuzzy now let's switch this to exact i'm very curious hit apply name now why again why is that so Irfan will get to go dig into this again and we, we've spent a lot of time or i say we he um and some with um, Rizwan, and Rizwan's been testing stuff, and Hoseas is helping coach through stuff, but it's, uh, every time I go to use this, we think we got it, and then, um, it doesn't quite work, so I don't know why those aren't working, so, anyway, that one's almost there, but like I said, these things take a crazy amount of time, um, let me exit out of that one before I forget it's running. Uh, get the Excel data, so, this one, we're looping over an Excel file, uh, getting the text and then we're going to make a video on just demonstrating it because we used the Excel module in our function library to go do this stuff um, The Chrome this is a really cool one. Um, let me go ahead and use this one. The other one's a custom version uh, But they're basically the same thing. It's just the hotkey. So I ran it now It looks so let me go edit actually. Let me see here. I gotta make sure I open studio in the the v2 version of studio first now let me drag that in there it's already open, yay. Um, and we can, of course, stack. So this one, this browser back or F1 will do the same thing. Now, if I have Chrome open, we bring Chrome over, and I do multiple tabs. Now, I changed the theme, which allows it, makes it easier to see which one's active, but if I come back here, it's, it's much easier to see, but if I hit my hotkey, was it F1? There it goes. So, see how it gets highlighted? I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the thing is, if you open something in incognito, and let's do, I wish there was an easier way to do this, it gets real hard to tell if you're in here, which one is the active tab. So, our tool can make it easy to see which one's active, right? That, I was trying to do it with the theme like I did on the normal window, and it, it wasn't working. I couldn't figure it out. And so, um, Irfan, I think Irfan and Isaias helped both on that with that one using UIA. It's a very simple script. Let's go back at it, and, and this one will make available some point. Look at that's it, right? So just copy the screen. Um, but yeah, it, it really is that simple. Obviously, you need the UIA um both of these libraries, I think, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's very cool. So it's a simple way where I think we're going to make it where you can adjust your hotkey. And maybe, I don't know, I haven't studied that UIA object a lot, but if we can change that highlight color, if we can choose that, or the amount of time it stays highlighted, because I don't think we're doing that. UIA automatically does it for a certain amount of time. And yeah, maybe we'll make that as part of the things, but that'll be a nice, simple script. Um, so that's that one. Again, let me exit out of the right thing. Exit out of that. I need to change that recently modified script so I don't accidentally close it during these calls or these recordings. So clip share. 
we, we've, we're still updating our tool for sharing the clipboard across computers uh, as long as you have a network drive it's uh it's we've just hit a wall because we've been doing so much but um maybe we'll we'll get rizwan to work on it because we're we've all been really busy here's the one he did uh which is really cool i shared that last week and demoed it i think and i made a video on it so you can go see that this process through ffmpeg this one where we need to add the licensing but this is going to be a tool uh and it's a great little tool it, it wraps ffmpeg but you drag a video into here actually let me see here let me see if I can find a, a short video. Let's see how long that one is. Oh, I think that's the one I'm recording right now. Here, here's one of my son on the tractor. Oh, nope. Oh, him walking crazy. But I'm going to drag it into here. Now, the way this tool works, you first set your settings the way you want them. They'll say faster, and, and we have tool tips to help give a little bit of advice, because I love Handbrake, but it's so crazily complicated. And so... Um, this tool is very very simple and it uh it gives you a couple things to change but not a crazy amount of stuff um, and the tool tips help give some advice as to when you what you might want to do but we're going to leave that here's him walking with his one leg bent around when he was younger but i'll drag it into here and it's going to process it now this is going to be pretty quick because it's a short video but even then the tool itself is pretty fast and let's see how it did um as a percentage wise I'm not sure how well it'll compress this because it's a it's not a big video anyway yeah and, and so that's the interesting point it actually made it bigger which is not a good sign right but um on other things where it's a big video it can reduce it I've seen it reduce it down to like 20% of the original so even less than that it's a crazy it can it's really crazy how compressed and you can't even tell the difference between what you're looking at so we're we're going to be selling that i think again for like five dollars but it's a very very simple to use easy to use tool compared to handbrake which does infinitely more but infinitely more means you really got to know what you're doing right our tool it's good to go you you can leave it just with the defaults and somewhere here we move the preferences to here um you know, metadata so that's another one which i don't think that's in handbrake i didn't see a way to do that Sometimes you'll download videos and they have like a title or author or comments. And if you watch them like on a Roku TV over a network drive, that they don't use the name, they use those. And sometimes they're crazy. So this tool, if you have that selected, will remove all the metadata, which is really, really handy. Um, yeah. So anyway, it's, it's a very, but where, oh, restore defaults. There we go. So that, and Rizwan updated that one this week. Before, last week, I think, when I, now that I think I was covering this, it, it restarted the, the GUI. And so he went through and fixed it where it just um, restores the defaults to all these are the default. So very good job, Rizwan. All right. Um, hold on. Let's, let's you got to see this video, by the way. <laughs> that, to me, is so freaky. But, um, Yeah. He's not handicapped or something. He's just, uh, he was very, very flexible. I don't, don't think he can still do that now. Um, all right, let's get back. Let's close some of these other folders. We'll close that. Um, and we'll close that. We're back to the tool. Get active path. Someone in the hero group said they downloaded this and they had an error. Um, we, Irfan pointed it out, but um, I'm not sure how that, if that's actually in our download. So I asked Irfan to take a look at that. This resizable GUI. Um, I asked Rizwan, the V2 version, or Isaiah's converted it during a hero call, and then I asked Rizwan to um, make it a little more flexible in the function because it was supposed to be a very, very simple, super simple thing, which it still is. The difference now is, this is probably also open. No, it's not, okay. Is now we have other defaults, and I need to tell him um, in our default thing, like here it has blue, um, and that's that's he's putting the words in here I like to put the words up here also because if people are new to this, it's easier to tell. Like, this is 250, 250, 300, 300. Like, what the hell is that, right? If you're using Studio, you know that's the X or Y. Site doesn't do that, right? And VS Code obviously does as well. But, um, yeah, it's a very cool little... You can have a, a very flexible GUI. I also asked them to make it where the, uh, the wrap and the horizontal scroll um, are parameters in the function because as long as you set a default value 
you can still have it very, very simple where people don't need to know like this, they just call it and they don't have to say all the other options because we have default values, right? So we're gonna add those other two. I think everything else we have that, that could or slash should be a parameter are already in there. But that'll be, um, we'll update the download once that's done. It's already, the I think, the, I know the, the resizable GUI that Baser wrote for me years ago is there in V1. I don't think we created the V2 version yet online because we're making a few more tweaks to it. But yeah, that's uh, that's that one. Rafadium. So Irfan has been working on videos on and updated in the library on Rafadium. And actually, Isaias this week, even though we were really busy, Isaias was helping Irfan work through some of the things about detecting if Rafadium was already running and not presenting an error or options or saying, do you want to close? So if it already is running and you try to start it again, it'll connect to it instead of having to always start a new instance. Um, Rafadium is a great library for doing complex things. However, it, um, it also means like you have to close down the browser. If you have Chrome open and you're automating Chrome, you have to kill every instance of Chrome and then relaunch it. So one of the scripts that Irfan did for me were automating the YouTube um, not the upload, but we go get of our hero calls and YouTube summaries. We take those and put the uh, shortened version in the subtitles, and then we put the full version of the summary onto the web page in HTML. It's really complicated, but I instead of having them do that in Chrome, we automate it in Edge because I don't browse with Edge, and so that way we didn't have to worry about it. But now this other version, um, the updated version, Rafadium, I don't I don't know if it's online yet uh, in the GitHub repository but um it will automatically won't ask you questions of like do you want to close all your browsers which is really annoying so message master that's the we use the mailgun api for sending the newsletter and i made a couple minor tweaks just in the source of where the, the folder and files were um, the search replace helps me work with the newsletter i've covered that several times so i'm not going to open it but I, I made some updates to that one because the um the regular expression for the youtube match which i ran into um Irfan fixed it where we had it. We didn't have the multi-line uh, option, and so once we fixed that, it, it, it took care of it. Where it's working the way I wanted to. Uh, one of our clients, he Ryan Wells, where there's a, we have a video on like tracking your time. Where does the time go? And Ryan Wells had offered a V1 version of this script, and then we borrowed what he gave us, and then we adjusted, we converted it to V2, and then we added bells and whistles where. It not only tracks it, but also dumps it into Excel and it aggregates it for you to make it easier to tell where your time is spent. It looks at the titles of the windows, right? And, and keeps monitoring it and stuff. Um, anyway, one of our clients wanted the, the program to be able to be run on multiple computers and track which computer and, and where he's doing the stuff. And so that wasn't in the program. So we adjusted that. And that one at some point, because it's... He paid for that upgrade, but that's what it, he he won't. I'll confirm with him, but I don't think he'll care if we share that updated version of the script with everybody, right? So we'll have that available. Um, the text, this one, man, that was really cool. We haven't released this yet, but this is the V two version of Get Text Under Mouse, and I'm gonna tell you. Let's see what's the hotkey. I think we're actually adding it where it'll you can select a hotkey. Where? By the way, the uh, I can preview these because I've adjusted my my preview handlers, and that's a it's another script that um T J wrote for us. It's it's really phenomenal. But where do I? Let's just oh, screw it. Let's launch it. And of course, it didn't ask. So let me see if I can find it in my system tray. Ah, it's a T. Okay, remind. Nope, that's the wrong one. I have another one that has a T. There we go. I know it's on the other screen. Sorry, I'm sorry. Control Shift B. So if I hit Control Shift B, Control Shift B, unable to find text. That's surprising. Oh, there we go. So wow, that just grabbed that from there. Let me do it over here. So it also highlights. Notice it's highlighting the element on where I got it. So I'm hitting this thing and it's putting the text in this GUI. What? That's in, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna have to tell Irfan it should 
it should only allow for the last one, not every one of them separate. Um, that's funny. Let me see how it does in here. What if I select it here? What happens? That's... Oh, it got it. Sorry. Yeah, let's try it in this one. Wow, like that is really crazy. Um, let's, how about this tab? So, yeah, man, I, I'm blown away. So, yeah, uh, this uses the UI library, and it, it will, you can move your mouse over something, and often it will get the text under it, which is just, it's really, really crazy. I did know when we looked at it in Telegram, it wouldn't grab it from Telegram. Let me try it in OBS, because I'm recording this with OBS. I'm really curious. <laughs> If it'll pull... Yeah, it pulled it from OBS as well. That's really, really cool. So we don't have that one available yet. And obviously we don't want to have that text um, coming up in multiple GUIs. And, um, but that's I'm, I'm really blown away. That's such a great tool. That's good. People are going to love that. Uh, let me close that one. Okay. Mouse, resizable GUI. We already talked about that. We already talked about that one. Automator Spy. We did make a change to our Automator Spy, and Isaiah mentioned how when you go to select with Automator Spy, because it uses the Control Hotkey to update. If you hit Control C, it would update, and we didn't want that. So, um, Danny, that one of our clients we were on a call with, he said, well, why don't you make it where it's the right control to update instead of the left control? Because most people aren't going to hit control C with the right control, right? So uh, that was a great, simple way to change it. So that one got updated. I, I don't know if, yeah, actually he wrote me this weekend and said it was updated. So it's online. Um, this is the script that goes, logs into YouTube, does all that work. It, man, it, it saved me. A good 30 minutes I'd say today um, when I was doing those uh, getting the the subtitles for the videos and running them basically through ChatGPT the extension does it but you get the idea right but that was really cool so every week now that's like 30 minutes I'll have back because Irfan did that for me so that's very very cool um, here's the um, one where we just get the the banner and the IDs and the here's the the regex for the video ID for YouTube so um, that's basically it for this week. Please like the video if you learned something or if you want to keep learning. Those hero calls, I'm telling you, you're missing out if you're not a member. And right now we do have a, a program where you, the first month, I think it's $1.99 for the first month. After that, it's $15.99 a month. But I'm telling you, you're going to save time, so much time, it's, and time is money, right? Really consider joining if you don't, you know, join if you don't like it. I'll refund you the money for the first month if you're not happy with it. It's fine. It's, it's, it's a really, really, really great program. Um, the people in there are at all different levels. We talk about different stuff each week. We have right now have three hours. I am talking to Irfan about running because he's in Pakistan, right? So he is 14 hours ahead of me, I think. So we were talking to him about having him run a call um, that is more conducive for people over in like Asia. Um, uh, and Europe, of course, too, right? But he's so far across there, it's really hard. That's why we, one of the reasons why we have our calls early in the morning, because at 11 o'clock for us is 9 p.m. Um, for him, if I remember right. Anyway, you get the idea. So we're thinking about having another hero hour at a different time. Now, Isaiah and I probably won't be on it because it'll be in the middle of the night for us. But he, he's a very capable programmer now in uh, Auto Hotkey. And uh, so he'll be able to run the calls without a problem. So maybe, like I said, we're, we're planning that for some point. I'm just not sure when that'll happen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Cheers.